I grew up in a rural country that uh, everything is from what you, what's around you, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I did study a bit on basketry and then looking at how people make baskets uh, from Philippines, from China, all the materials are very immediate. Mm -hmm. So that's where I um, pick up the, the idea mm -hmm. using that. And also being Chinese, uh, grew up in the, um, uh, during the war, Second World War, and, uh, and the material is very um, wear. You know, mm -hmm. uh, so you you don't throw away anything in in in, <laughs> in the community I live. So uh, and I I I I also have the habit. You know, mm -hmm. when I was trimming the the trees in my backyard, I just could not throw away all those branches. So I start using them. Mm -hmm. As simple as that. Kai Chen is known as a master of the unremarkable because he likes the search for new materials outside of those traditional mainstream art, especially those that can be found in everyday life. Kai was born in 1940 in wartime China. In 1966, he immigrated to Canada, currently living and working in Toronto. Growing up during the Second World War, the environment in Canada makes him appreciate simple things in life and draw inspiration from the basic elements in his immediate surroundings, such as light, air, earth, water, and flora. While his preferred fiber medium is thread, Kai likes to work with everyday materials that are often recyclable, such as newspaper, ink, toothpicks, tree branches, and glass, because for him, the nature of these materials represents a fundamental value that informs the human condition, which I think is really meaningful that can also promote sustainability. Chen's work magnifies both his physical journey from China to Canada and his personal journey as an artist negotiating a cross-cultural identity. Cross 399 Day and Night is the artwork he created in 1996, using materials such as dye, nails, threads, and toothpicks, which looks really amazing. As Kai was born in wartime, his childhood experience has been a significant foundation in building his work, namely pursuing peace and stability. The vertical and horizontal arms could symbolize the interpretation of two opposed realms, such as heaven and earth, spiritual and temporal, masculine and feminine, or of time and space. The midpoint of this crossroad represents the area of equilibrium between these two opposing realms, and thus the perfected human being. Spanning 35 years of Chen's career, this retrospective exhibition titled A Spider's Logic brings together 17 of his major works. Working with common and household things that are reminders of his years growing up in China, he draws inspiration from Chinese landscape paintings. This work called Magritte uses hundreds of nails in a wall that allows him to suspend red silk threads in a variety of flowing lines and shapes. In Aurora, he collects layers and layers of crimson cotton and nylon thread and drifts them over a wooden beam to create a thick curtain that's both solid and fluid. We can see that his works have strong Chinese influences and he's trying to find a balance that was both Chinese and Western culture into his works. Xia Gao is my second artist who previously studied and taught fashion design at the China Textile University in Shanghai and then her family moved to the States for her husband's PhD study. Currently, she's an assistant professor in the Department of Art and Art History at Michigan State University. Xia's work tells stories, personal experience, and her renewed connection to Chinese culture. Similar to Kai Chen, geographic migrations and relocations brought her new insights into her life and her oriental origin. Her projects are inspired by the changes and transformations in her own life and her cultural tradition. The conversations between East and West, nature and culture, past and present are recurring themes in her work. The ones that are particularly appealing to me are those integrates traditional Chinese culture. For example, she uses vermilion in many of her works, which is the color that symbolizes luck, joy, and happiness in Chinese culture. I think she also draws inspiration from the Chinese chairs, like the one in the middle, and she named her project Fever Red. 
I had a feeling of deep connection when I first saw those pictures, because my family had a pair of them that looks very similar to her work, and we used to sit on them watching TV together. These chairs were built during the Ming and Qing dynasty, which is popular in modern times. They are characterized by their vast and square-shaped seat pans and grand appearances. This bench-shaped sculpture also invites rest, but like the chairs from the last slide, the material she used, which is cable tie, and spiky cushion does the opposite. It reflects both individual and cultural uneasiness and tensions when facing ch changes and pressures. It appeals to me because both right color and the shape alludes to Chinese culture. Appreciating the beauty of our life, one life, one spring reflects on humanity's short existence as compared to the nature. I like the idea that she draws from a Chinese idiom, which means man has but one life, grass sees but one spring, speaking to the brevity of human existence. Life after life holds similar perspective, but her stepfather who passed away, it celebrates the strength of life, even after the death. It started as a personal contemplation of happenings in life, and she was further inspired by the site and the natural environment to express broader perspectives. I come up with some questions that I hope you can think about after this presentation. Thanks for listening.